I can hear the eagles now. While I'm not specifically a wildlife photographer, I do love taking pictures of bald eagles in my area. I consider it like bird photography, but on expert mode. As you know, the bald eagle is the national bird of the United States as in, and was once an endangered species. Now that they are no longer an endangered species, they are still protected by federal law. Because of that, that makes them a little bit more common these days than they were in the past, but are still somewhat elusive at times. And because of that can also be fun when spotted. Now, did you know that bald eagles are not actually bald? The name derives from an older meaning of the word meaning white Headed. The male and female adult are both mainly brown with obviously the white head and tail that we all know. A juvenile eagle will be brown or mostly brown with some white mixed in as they mature. And so you know the bald eagle is an opportunistic feeder which subsists mainly on fish. Because of that you'll find them near bodies of water that are plentiful with fish. So. What do we need to make sure that we get some good shots of a bald eagle? So besides the obvious piece of equipment, the camera, there are a few things that you'll need to have access to in order to capture one of these feathered icons. The first of which is the telephoto lens. I'm using my 100 to 400 lens for birds and eagles. This gives me the zoom range to get in close to them and see the details. Optionally, I also use a 1.4x teleconverter with this 100 to 400 to help squeeze in just a little bit more to get those details. Other nice to haves are obviously a tripod or a monopod, a camera strap obviously to carry your, your camera, and a chair or stool to sit down and relax on since you might be waiting around for a while. For camera settings, you want to use your wildlife or action settings on your camera if you have set one of those up for your custom functions. If not, make sure that you keep a few things in mind. The first thing is light. Is it bright or sunny? Is it cloudy and gloomy? Your settings may need to be adjusted depending on that weather. So the rule of thumb that I use on my wildlife and action settings in these scenarios is a shutter speed of 1200 with an ISO of 1200. And then I'll sometimes stop my aperture down to about a half to full stop from the lowest that it'll go. I find that my 100 to 400 lens performs the best in those scenarios. Now, of course, you may need to up your ISO or slow your shutter speed to accommodate the lighting, but you also want to keep your shutter speed at least faster than the focal length that you're shooting at. So if you're shooting at 400 millimeters, you want your shutter speed to be 1 400th of a second. This helps freeze the action of the birds. So how do we find our eagles? One of the things that you can use is a designated eagle viewing site in your local area if it has one. In New York on the state DEC website, they have viewing locations listed. So make sure that you check your local environmental agencies for something similar. They may already have the resources for you. Another option for locating bald eagles is the Cornell University eBird website and app. This is one that I use to help find locations, not just for eagles, but other kinds of birds as well. And once you have picked a location and get out there, make sure to scan the tree line for eagles that are perched in the treetops. This is a fairly common behavior for them, especially in the winter when they have larger bodies of water nearby that don't freeze. But also, make sure to look up. Looking overhead for eagles soaring high in the sky is a great way to capture them in flight, and sometimes you can even get a photo of them flying away with dinner as well. So if you're near a larger body of water, make sure to check for ice flows, river islands, or even objects that stick up from the waters for eagles that might be out sunning themselves or enjoying a meal. For timing, when you go out, look to arrive early, usually within a few hours of sunrise, or even stay late during the late afternoon before sunset. Eagles are going to be most commonly active during those times. Another time that I will go out looking for eagles is when the tide is leaving in about an hour or so from low tide. In my experience, I have found that they tend to be active around that time as well. But ultimately, be patient. Patience is the key for successful viewing of eagles. Sometimes when I head out to my usual areas for eagle spotting, I see them right away. Other times I sit there for hours before they arrive. It is uncommon that I get that instant gratification on spotting eagles, so having patience will give you the most opportunity to see an eagle and capture your photo. So now that we're out in the field, we should probably keep a few things in mind. Um, there are some ethics that are involved in going out and shooting wildlife, there's some ethics involved in not only, you know, being on the land and, and where you're at, but most importantly, it's for your own safety and for the safety of the wildlife that you're 
taking photos of. One of the things that I like to keep in mind is distance. Uh, you never want to be too close to any of your wildlife. You never want to be too close to anything that could potentially put you in danger, but also put the, the wildlife itself in danger. Um, there's a lot of people out there that will take shortcuts in order to get the perfect shot. Um, and sometimes their judgment can be skewed when you do that, because if you're working towards the perfect shot, uh, you might take a shortcut that puts not only yourself, but the wildlife and others in danger. So one of the things that I like to keep in mind is, is distance, um, especially when I'm out taking photos of eagles, because, you know, eagles are, are majestic and regal and, and all that good stuff, but uh, they have pretty sharp talons and pretty sharp beaks, and quite frankly, you don't want your face ripped off uh, when you're out trying to get your photo might be a little bit of an exaggeration but they are capable of doing you know some damage to a person if you're getting too close if they feel threatened and need to defend themselves so make sure to keep that in mind because you know it's it's for their safety but it's for your safety as well because you don't want to get injured uh, during the process either so one of the things that i try to do is i use a rule of thumb and i've this is something that i've used uh, throughout my life in various situations is you know if you can take your thumb right, and cover up where the the wildlife is then that's you know, that means that you're pretty far away. Generally speaking, you want to be about a thousand feet, you know, anywhere from 700 to a thousand feet away, uh, which is about, you know, 250 to uh, 300 meters for you metrically inclined people. The distance is important because the closer you to get, the more anxious that they might get, the more agitated they might get, but also it puts them in danger because they may act irrationally as well and do something to hurt you or themselves. But allowing that distance also gives you the opportunity to be able to sit back and observe. You can now just sit and watch because when you sit and watch and you observe their behaviors, you can actually get them in a natural environment uh, with natural behaviors that you might not see if you get too close. Uh, you know, for right now, you know, if you see an eagle sitting in a tree or any kind of wildlife just sitting there, you know, it's good to wait. It's good to sit and observe, watch what they're doing, see if they're watching you, um, see if they're watching, you know, the... I can hear the eagles now. The, uh, you know, it's good to make sure that they, you know, are observing what's going on around them so that way they are able to uh, behave the way that they normally would. So by sitting here and just watching and observing, you can see what behaviors they have. They might be sitting here looking at the river, waiting to go fishing. Uh, the tide is currently going out, which is a good time uh, for them to go to go fishing. Um, I have my telephoto lens on with a teleconverter so I can get in real close because I'm from the tree that they normally sit in and I just heard I just heard the eagles flying around here so they're probably coming here shortly. I'm hoping that they come here shortly. You know I'm far enough away where I can see them there but then with the telephoto and the teleconverter I can get in nice and close so that way I can then capture their behavior from a safe distance. I think this one's getting ready to fly. So right now I'm pretty far away, but there's an eagle right here in this tree and I'm, it actually landed in a closer tree than I normally see them in. So they've actually put themselves, or this one actually put itself in a great spot as another one is just flying over now. So I'm gonna try to take some video with the camera, with this camera and uh, hopefully we can get something good for you.